Arcade Perfect My Arse. Right, okay guys, welcome to another Arcade Perfect My Arse. This week I'm taking a look at Classic Horizontal Shooter by Konami. This is Gradius Oblique Nemesis. Um, from what I gather, they are both the same game. Um, on when the, this game was released um, for the 8-bit, it was renamed Nemesis. I'm not quite sure why companies change names for games. There's always a reason for it, but as far as I'm concerned, it's both one and the same game. So this is arcade one. It's a lovely, lovely game. I did play the C64 one back in the day, and if I remember really, it's not actually half bad. Now, I'm using an Xbox 360 controller, which is really not the way to play. The problem with that is you don't have the same precise movement, and so when you try and go too close to the edge of the screen, like I'm probably going to demonstrate soon, you can kind of overcook it and end up running into the, uh, <laughs> running into the, uh, the, the landscape. Oh, so it's quite odd whether there's a wee gap in the mountain there, or is that another mountain away in the distance? I'm not quite sure. The little killer teapots that run along the bottom. I wouldn't even like to think how many different versions of Gradius there have been. Um, I mean, there's so many. What I've, what I've tried to do here is, other than one version, I believe all the versions I've looked at today, are all based on the original Gradius of Leap Nemesis. Because there's Gradius 2, I think there's Gradius 2 in the, the arcades. There's numerous ones, I mean, the, one of my favourite sort of, uh, I call it current gen or modern gen, i.e. PlayStation 2 is Gradius 5 and the PlayStation 2 is an astonishing game. But yeah, this is a wonderful game. It's You move from left to right, you collect uh, power-ups, you see there you've got speed up, double laser, multiple, options. I think this was certainly one of the earliest games to feature power-ups. I mean, Mooncrester, I think, is always, always gets the, uh, the sort of, the claim of being one of the first games to have a kind of power-up system, because you, you could dock and get different things, but uh, this is the first game I remember where you could pick you know, you picked up tokens and then you upgraded accordingly. Obviously stuff like R-Type came along a few years later. And it's such a, such a nice game. You know, there's some real iconic uh, levels and not that I've ever got to them. Um, you've got like Stonehenge and that kind of stuff. So that is Arcade one. So let's take a look at one of the first home versions. Right, first up we've got MSX, which was one of these systems where it was an agreed platform and everybody was going to make the same compatible computers. Sadly, it never really took off. Anyway, MSX one. Um, this is a very, very nice one actually. It's nippy. Nice little graphics. Never actually played this one before. Uh, the only slight downside to this one, well, I was going to say it's monochrome graphics. What's interesting is the little kettles at the top are multicoloured, the other sprites are all single coloured. If anybody knows why that is, can you tell me? I'm guessing it's obviously some sort of uh, hardware limitation. They could only have so many coloured sprites. I mean, the little uh, pickups are obviously two colours. You can see there, the wee baddies are all monochrome and little kettles that go along the bottom, they're all monochrome as well, so it's obviously something to do with, you know, lacky sprites, whatever, I don't know, I am not technical at all. You can see there, these are all, I mean, this looks kind of like it's running a spectrum until you see the little graphics at the top, but really nice, the sound's excellent as well. Usually in this game, the one I usually try and go for is the laser and then get as many options as you can possibly pick up. And the one thing about this game, <laughs> and it's similar to our type, probably ha even more so, is when you die, if you've got lots of weapons and then you die, it's virtually impossible to try and recover because you're halfway through a level and you've got the very, very basic weapons. 
so it can be quite tricky. Scrolling's not the greatest, you can see there it's sort of scrolling as it is it character based if they call it. It's not pixel scrolling, it's slightly juddery. But it's done in such a way that it doesn't really it doesn't really impact in the game at all. But that's really nice. I'm sure I remember seeing screenshots of this game on MSX and compu uh, computing video games and always thought it looked it looked really really good. So anyway, that is the MSX one, let's crack on. Right, next up, this is the one that I used to play back in the day, this is the Commodore 64. I could never get really far in it at all. Interestingly, this game I'm sure it came in a it came in a long elongated cardboard box, which was uh, different from what we used to get games in. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Enough about the the box art. We're talking about the game here. And this one is really really nice. Again, it's very very quick. Some very very slight flickering going on there, you can see there the bullets, I don't know if that's coming across in the video, slight flickering, but it's nice scrolling, super smooth, oops a daisy, super smooth is what you want. And it's damned hard, <laughs> my memory serves me well in that aspect, I could never get very far in that at all, some things never change. The only annoying thing about this game, on most of the home systems, um, certainly the computers, was you had to try and press uh, a button to pick the weapons. And so, I mean, it's such a sort of fast-paced game, you know, you really can't afford to take your eyes off the screen, even for a split second. It would be nice, I mean, in the, 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 the case of this one, it's the, sh the shift button. Why didn't they make it the space bar? At least you could you know, you could use the base of your hand or something to hit the space bar, but when you've got to look away from the screen and look at the keyboard, it's not ideal. I'm probably doing better <laughs> today at this game than I did back in the day. Little killer kettles at the bottom. Boom. Yeah, that's a C64 one. That isn't half bad, actually. Right, next stop, Nemesis, and this is on the Game Boy. And it's actually not a bad version at all. <laughs> I always think when you when you show off um, Game Boy games now, like through emulation. You can realise, you get to see the games um, in a better light than you got to see when you, you when you're, you know, when you were playing them on the Game Boy, because obviously the Game Boy didn't have the greatest screen. It was all greys, it was a tiny screen, and it had a uh, screen blur, so basically when a game scrolled, or when you moved at all, the screen would blur. So you're getting to see games, games on the Game Boy uh, under emulation look better now than they did back in the day, even though it's the same game almost, it's just because of the technology of the screen's improved. You see there that the baddies don't really resemble the ones in the arcade, they look slightly different. I mean, where are the killer kettles? You've got these big long... It actually looks like the guys out of, is it Mag Max, I think it is, the video game. The big walking robot things. But, you know what, for a handheld version, this isn't actually bad at all. Yeah, it's all black and white, but, you know, what do you expect? It is a Game Boy after all. Game Boy certainly had some cracking conversions, which was really impressive, being the the technology. So, yeah, that is the Game Boy one. Let's move on. Now, here we go. This is my <laughs> Holy Grail computer. This is the Sharp X68000. Now, I notice when I'm playing this, it's not playing quite so smooth, so 
I think you'd probably find that this played even better on real hardware. But it's pretty difficult to really uh, spot the difference between this and the arcade. You'd probably find that the actual Sharp X68000 hardware was more powerful than the hardware that was actually running this arcade game. Listen to that sound, the multi octave, really nice. It's interesting to see if this video gets a copyright thing slapped on it. Although then again, it's generally Namco. You can't feature any Namco game at all without getting a copyright thing. It doesn't really bother me too much because I don't monetize my videos. Um, the only thing that does annoy me sometimes is when you know it will say that certain videos are not available in certain countries, and I want all my videos to be available to anybody that wants to watch them. This is lovely. This game was ported to, I mean, there was obviously when the PlayStation came out, Xbox One, PlayStation 2, this game did appear on multiple uh, compilations. I mean, I think there's a, is it Gradius 1 and 2 disc for the PlayStation? And as you'd probably expect, it is arcade perfect because it's actually running the arcade one. I don't bother including them in this because that would be boring because it's the, it is the arcade game. You know, so obviously if you want to play the real thing, you either play main or play one of the, the compilations. But it's nice to see just that there are some really, really good versions of this on the home computers. So that is the Sharp X68000. Moving from one obscure Japanese computer to one extremely common British computer. This is the ZX Spectrum if you haven't already figured it out with a little uh, Spectrum music. <laughs> now I think this game was quite infamous when it was uh, released because I believe, now I don't know what magazine was it, Your Spectrum or something, it wasn't Crash. There was a Spectrum game released, a preview, it had screenshots of this game and the screenshot, sorry, the screenshots looked incredible. And sadly, when the game actually came to fruition, i.e. what you're seeing here, although it's a good version, the graphics did not look anything like the screenshots that were uh, basically being touted through the preview. So that was a wee bit cheeky. Whether or not they thought it was going to be and they realised you know, the computer can't physically handle the graphics, I don't know. But um, I remember Stuart Campbell did a really good article all about it. In fact, I'll see if I can find the article. And I'll, if I can, I'll put a link down below. Basically, it was like uncovering this uh, scam, how the, the pictures they showed weren't the pictures that were actually in the, the uh, subsequent game. But anyway, to forget that, this is actually not a bad little version. It's pretty much... <laughs> I'm just laughing at the big, the big long legs in the kettle. Every other version, it's got wee stumpy legs. This has got big sleek legs. Either that it's got stilts or something. Sorry for being a bit rubbish at the game because I'm not really letting you see all the, the versions in their full glory. I mean, you're only getting to see the kind of boring bit at the very start where you're uh, picking up the power ups. But scrolling in, this one's not bad actually. I think we're going to have quite a tough time actually unravelling what is the best version. Um, I mean, there's a few, there's a few excellent versions still to come, as you'll soon see. But yeah, that's the Spectrum one. It is what it is. It's really nice. Right, first, uh, first up, first of the consoles. No, no, we've looked at the Game Boy one already. This is the NES one. Now, I'm not a big fan of NES, but I've got to say I am. Really, really impressed with this. This is excellent. Graphics are detailed, sounds good. The NES can sometimes uh, have a bit of a uh, screen tear, sprite flickering, and that kind of stuff, but I've not seen any evidence of that so far. Possibly when some of the bigger enemies, there is a, a 
I think there's a dragon that comes out at one point, although I don't think I'm going to get to that level. I mean, well, yeah, you can see there the, the sprites flickering a wee bit. But you know what, it's, that wouldn't have stopped me playing this if I had an NES back in the day. Yeah, if you look at the bottom, you can see them flashing a wee bit, but that's just obviously down to the, down to the hardware. Now, there's only one version of this game which I believe came out, but I can't find it anywhere. I couldn't even find anyone else playing it on YouTube, and it's the PC. I believe there was a PC DOS, or MS DOS, I should say, version of this, but I can't find it anywhere. Sadly, I don't think this game ever got a port to like the Amiga or the ST in the 16 bit computers. Apart from obviously the, uh, the sharp. But yeah, I'd have been absolutely delighted to get this on my Christmas. You know, it's effectively the arcade. The arcade at home. Yeah, that's really, really nice. I'm impressed with that one. That is NES. Right, next up, this is the Amstrad. Fast little game, actually. At least every version has attempted to get the music. The spectrum of the music? I can't remember, actually. But yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's what you would expect. It is extremely playable, which is good. Let's see if <laughs> Let's just see if I can get past this initial pick up the power up stage. I'm certainly not doing a very good job so far. Like I say, I'm using an Xbox 360 controller and it's not the best, it's not the best uh, control method for a game like this. I just don't see all the firepower to actually destroy all these things. It's obviously a game, the more you play it, you know exactly where these guys are going to come out. Hey, on to level 2. Uh, nice colored graphics, so let's go for one more. Oh, I've started a two player game. Ah, listen, right, I think we've seen enough of the Amstrad one, that isn't actually that bad. Let's move on. Right, second last stop is the PC Engine. Now, I have played this before, and if I remember really, it's quite a spiffing game. Yeah, look at that. Lovely. Hmm, this is going to be a tough, a tough call on what is the best version. I should really start thinking now. Uh, yeah, some great versions. I've got to say, I haven't actually seen a bad version yet. Obviously, the 8-bit ones definitely lack. They lack the colour of the uh, the console versions. The Sharp X68000 though. You can just imagine owning a PC Engine when your mates are playing Spectrums and Commodore 64s and Amstrads and you've got this. You've got an arcade version. Ah, I notice one slight little uh, deviation between this one and other versions is that there is a bit of scrolling goes on. Was that to try and retain the original uh, screen aspect ratio or something like that? You 
obviously in this version you're, you've not got any any screen slowdown at all. No kind of graphical tearing. I really should play this game more. I do play it quite a lot, but I never I never play it often enough to actually get good at it. You know, it's one of these games. It's like any game though, you know, you've got to invest time in it. If you don't if you're not prepared to invest time in a game then you'll never get unless you're extremely talented at video games, which I'm definitely not. You're never really gonna get too far on it. That as high as I'm going to go, surely not. Oh! <laughs> I think I spoke too soon. I like the scrolling star field in this version. I mean, the screens can he, apart from moving as well as they do, can he blink on and off, which is a nice touch. Yeah, this, playing this, uh, making this video has actually whetted my appetite for the game. I think I'll make, make a point. Might even have a shot at that tonight. Did he shoot them? Ah, bollocks. Anyway, listen, that's enough of that one. That is a PC Engine version. That is excellent. Right, and last up, guys. This, I put this one last because technically it's slightly cheating. It's not the original Gradius, it's called Gradius 3 and this is on the Super Nintendo. I wanted to include it because, you know, we're all things Gradius today in this video and I wanted to let you see his version because it is quite sublime. I mean, it's called Gradius 3, I think it is. From what I can see, it does look very, very similar. The original one. Possibly a label they or something. So anyway, listen, I need to start uh, summarising um, MSX, excellent um, computer version. C64, Spectrum, Amstrad, they are what they are. They're not the greatest. They're by far no no by far not bad versions. They are good versions. Super playable. But compared to the, the console ones, they don't match up. Um, but the MSX one is really nice. It's got some uh, dodgy scrolling, some uh, single coloured sprites. But I really, from the home computer ones, I would have to say the MSX is the best one. Um, console wise, Game Boy 1 is nice. It looks slightly different. But I think mm, it's going to be a tough one, this. I'm not going to include the NES, this, this one, the SNES. Yeah, I mean, look, this has got different things. This has got dragons, so this must be based on a later version. So what have we got? We've got the PC Engine, the NES, and the Sharp. I think I'm going to go for the NES in third place. It looks really nice. The only reason I'm not going to score it higher is because there is some graphical tearing. It's sort of flickering in the sprites when there's a lot on screen. So the NES is going to be in third place. In second place, I am going to have to go for the Sharp X68000. Um, it's a wonderful version, I mean it looks arcade perfect. It wasn't playing quite as good as I'd hoped. That may well be down to it being an emulator, I don't know. But the one, to my mind, which is the best version, home version, is going to be the PC Engine. It's just a stunning conversion. So anyway, that is it guys. As usual, hope you enjoyed watching it. Thanks for watching.